Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. Today we will have our vocabulary lesson number 76 in the series of vocabulary words from day number 100. We are on day number 76. Let's get going, shall we? The very first word we're going to learn is. And by the way, this is the word number 385. How do we pronounce it? Let's pronounce. Mass, that's the first syllable. Mass. Oh. Kiss. Um. Masochism. It's a noun. What does masochism mean? Masochism means one who drives pleasure, it means driving pleasure, driving pleasure from being subjected to abuse or physical pain. I know it's weird, but that's what it is. Masochism is where one drives pleasure. Either uh, uh, one drives pleasure from abuse or physical pain, and that pain is either subjected by oneself or by somebody else. If you, you can have somebody else uh, induce, uh, subject you to some, some sort of pain, or you can do it to yourself. And if you, if you drive pleasure from it, that uh, condition is called masochism. And the adjective, the person who drives the pleasure, is called either a masochist or masochistic. You can describe the person either a masochist or masochistic. You can say Jennifer is masochistic or she is masochist. That's the adjective. Now, this word most of the time when it is used, it is used in a very narrow context. It means to drive pleasure from being uh, abused or, or having so, so physical pain induced on yourself, usually, usually in the context of sexual activities. But it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be. You can also use it in a very broad sense. It just means somebody who drives pleasure from, 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 having, from being subjected to pain. And that's all there is. Let's get, let's get going. The next word we're going to learn is the exact opposite word, a word that means the exact opposite. Next word we're going to learn is let's, let's see how to pronounce this thing. The first syllable is heat. Hedonism. Hedonism. And so now, hedonism is just the opposite state where uh, you're doing something, you're doing something because it is pleasurable, because it is pleasurable without, without any regards to morality of it. So, a hedonist, which is the adjective, a hedonistic person or hedonist does not ask uh, himself or herself. Should I do this thing? Is it a right thing to do? Is it wrong? Is it morally, morally wrong? I know it's very pleasure, but it's going to give me immense pleasure, but it's not the right thing to do, is it? They do not ask this kind of question at all. This person does whatever, they, whatever it is that he or she does purely because it gives them pleasure. And such a person who seeks pleasure in everything that they do without any regard to the morality of the activity is called a hedonist. Hedonist as opposed to masochistic. Let's move on. Another word which is sort of related 
which is which is a word which is a neutral word this person is looking for pain looking for uh, abuse this person does things because it's pleasurable let's look at third word sometimes I'm going to number these words and sometimes I'm not, I'm not going to number them because it gets very annoying to number them all the time this was 386 387 And the word is, the first syllable is mo, mo, nas, tick, monastic, it's an adjective. What does monastic mean? Monastic means a person who lives a simple life, a simple life. Like a monk, like a monk, a very bare existence, a very, a very bare and austere, or if you like. ascetic existence a bare or ascetic existence as in a monastery as in as in a monastery Where monks live, where monastery, monastery is where the monks live, and monks, being monks, they live a very simple life, devoid of all the luxuries, all the pleasures, all the comforts that we find in the modern life. They live a very simple life, and somebody who lives in that manner. Somebody who lives in that manner is said to be monastic. He has a very monastic existence. In other words, he lives a very simple life, very devoid of luxuries, comforts, of uh, all the comforts that the modern life has to offer. Let's keep on going. Let's learn the word. Let's learn these two words, austere and ascetic. I need the room, obviously. Let's erase this part. I'm just going to stop numbering them because, as I said, I find it annoying to number every every word. Austere. An adjective, which means without worldly comfort, without worldly comforts. A very simple life, a very simple life, devoid of luxuries, a very simple life, devoid of luxuries. These days in the media, we hear of several European countries going through austerity. They're going through austerities because they have no money. They keep spending, they kept spending money like mad people over the last 20 or 30 years and now they're finding out that they have accumulated a great deal of public debt some of them as much as 100% of their GDP maybe even more than 100% of their GDP countries such as Italy, Portugal, Spain, Greece they come to mind and they are all going through a period of austerity austerity comes from the word austere the noun of austere is austerity let's keep on going shall we? the noun is Austerity. Somebody who lives an austere life, they have a life of austerity. And that's what you'll find in a monastery. I'll erase the word monastery. That's what you'll find in a monastery. Very austere existence. 
and such an existence is called a monastic existence. The word, the word monastic is derived from monastery. It comes from monastery. Let's move on. The next word we want to learn is ascetic. So we're going to do it on the top. O sat very simple pronunciation ascetic. It's an adjective again. Again, it means the same exact thing. Living like a monk. Very simple life, right? Right here. These are synonyms. These two are synonyms. I'm not going to read out everything. It means without worldly comfort, a very simple life, devoid of luxury. Living like a monk. Living like a monk. Very monastic existence. These are all synonyms. Monastic, ascetic, austere. These are all synonyms. Let's move on to a word which has absolutely nothing to do with what we're talking about at all. An entirely new word. Okay, let's change the subject. Give me a second. Next word that I want to learn is it's actually a tricky word. It's tricky because it's tricky because one has to pay attention to the pronunciation in the singular and plural form of the word. And the word is Many a times I have heard wrong pronunciations. Uh, people either pronounce it as a plural in the context of a singular uh, form or vice versa. They want to use plural but they pronounce it as a singular word. One has to pay attention. The word is me no, she, oh, minutia, minutia, or some sometimes if some, some people pronounce it as instead of instead of saying nu, second syllable being nu, they say new, new with a y sound in it, minutia. But notice the ending part, a uh, minutia, uh, minutia is a singular, is a singular. And what does it mean? Minutia means minute little details, minute little trivial details of a procedure. Some people are very picky, some people are very, very picky and they are worried about all oh, the minute, trivial little detail that really have no significance uh, effect at all, have no significance, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, repercussions at all, but they're still very picky about it. They want to pay attention to all the minute little details and you say that this person paid attention, pays attention to, and here we need the plural form, you see? We need the plural form, and the plural is going to be the way I the way I remember the way I keep them separate is very simple. The mnemonic device that I use is that because this is going to be the plural form, it has more letters. It has more letters, and because it has more letters, of course the pronunciation is going to change. It ends in an e, so the sound is going to end in an e. You see, that's how I remember it. It has E at the end, and therefore because it has one more letter, it is the plural. And it's pronounced either me nu or me new, she, e, me new she, e. me new she, e, which is the plural, me new she, e, which is the singular. So these kind of people, they pay attention to all the minor little tiny details, all the minutiae of a procedure, typically a bureaucratic procedure, a procedure dealing with the legality of the things. And such a person, is, and when one, one speaks of minutiae, minutiae of a bureaucratic or legal procedure, as I said. And that was it. I just want to learn the word, two different pronunciation, keep in mind, uh, keeping them separate, the singular form and the plural form. Minutia, minutiae. Let's move on. And such a person, 
And such a person who pays attention to my new details, we have a word for it. Such a person is called such a person is called a, a stickler. A stickler. And a stickler is one who is very strict about rules and regulations. Who is person who is very strict about all the rules and regulations. Person who demands, person who demands exactness. So if you describe somebody as being stickler for the neatness or stickler for the details, if the person is described as being a stickler for details, that means that person always demands exactness. Everything has to be just so he pays attention to all the minutiae of the procedure. Typically, as I said, it, it, is usually, it usually crops up in the context of, a, context of a bureaucratic procedure, legal procedure, that is. And that's all I had for today. That was the end of the quiz, or not, not the quiz, rather, our vocabulary lesson for day number 76. I'll see you tomorrow on day number 77. Bye now.